Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sebastian Kietenmeister. I'm a marketing manager here at Satara, and I have the pleasure today to introduce our expert, Chris. Chris Mel. Hi, Chris. Hi, I Sebastian. Will... Hey, everyone. Hey, I will hand over in a second, but please let me first provide some some housekeeping items for today's event. Um, this webinar is scheduled for around 45 minutes, including Chris' presentation and also a question and answer. Um, at the end of the webinar, if you um, experience technical difficulties, feel free to message us using the chat. Um, as a reminder, today's webinar is being recorded. We will email you and send you a link to the recording in the next few days. During Chris's presentation, all participants are in listen-only mode. But you have the opportunity to submit um, your questions um, using the chat pane in the control panel. And we will take your question and address them uh, at the end uh, of the webinar after the main presentation. And that was it from my side for the moment. And without further ado, Chris, it's all you. Thanks, Sebastian. So hello, and welcome to today's uh, presentation uh, about uh, hosted Phoenix and Integral. Uh, these are new product offerings by Sertara. Uh, I am your presenter today. My name is Chris. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. Uh, my educational background is in molecular biology and pharmacology. Uh, for much of my career at Sertara, uh, I have been doing training courses on products like Win Non Lin, IVIVC, NLME, and Trial Simulator. Uh, and then since 2019, I've been product manager for Phoenix and Phoenix Hosted to improve the software through customer feedback. So welcome, and I'm delighted to uh, have you uh, view this presentation today. Uh, I, I will give a brief uh, background about what is Phoenix. Uh, if any of you are not familiar, some may be familiar, some not. Uh, but Sertara's Phoenix platform is the leading PKPD modeling and simulation software. It's used by over 11,000 researchers at biopharmaceutical companies, academic institutions, and global regulatory agencies. Uh, Win on Lin has been around for many years, over 30 years. Uh, it has trusted algorithms with, um, and then the Phoenix interface provides a built-in, easy to use graphical user interface. And it offers uh, features that support compliance and efficiency, which include the fact that it's a global industry standard PKPD analysis platform. It has visual workflows that can be used and reused, and also locked to maintain compliance, increase efficiency, and create reports. So the idea of the workflow is that you can set up um, a series of analysis steps, pre-processing, um, NCA, modeling analysis, and then creating uh, plots and, and tables. Uh, and then if that's kind of a standard series of steps, you can make a template out of it so that you don't have to start from scratch every time you're doing an analysis. Very powerful feature. Uh, Phoenix produces high quality tables and figures and has a project centric uh, design to easily store, share, and reuse Phoenix projects. So, an entire series of analysis can be saved into one project file uh, and makes it easy to collaborate with your, your colleagues. Um, Phoenix also has a fully integrated validation suite for fast automated software validation uh, in under 30 minutes. So just kind of to, to recap, there's over 11,000 users worldwide at over 2,600 companies. Um, the top 20 global biopharma have or have used Phoenix uh, in over 60 countries. Uh, we've also trained many of our users through Sitara University uh, so that users can become experts in the software and be able to um, you know, talk with some knowledge base uh, with other professionals and colleagues uh, because they, they have a similar training and knowledge of the software. And uh, there are, um, Phoenix is often used in uh, FDA approvals, uh, also at academic institutions, and there are thousands of peer review articles that cite Phoenix. Okay, a look at our global footprint. Uh, we have the software is available through regulatory regions in uh, Western Hemisphere, Europe, as well as the APAC region. So I wanna talk briefly about some of the key functionalities of the Phoenix platform. So the Phoenix platform is one common user interface uh, for all sorts of different modules in PKPD analysis. Uh, so kind of first and most well-known is Win Non Lin, 
the nonlin stands for nonlinear, uh, and then it's used for individual PKPD modeling, non-compartmental analysis, and bioequivalence primarily. We also offer the IVIBC toolkit, that stands for in vitro in vivo correlation, and this is used in formulation development. Another module is the NLME, that stands, stands for nonlinear mixed effects modeling, and is typically used in population PKPD analyses. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous slide, uh, there are validation suites for both WinNonLin and NLME. Uh, we also offer the PK Submit plugin for Phoenix, which allows users to take NCA results and, and convert them into a CDISC uh, format and has all of the deliverables necessary for a submission. And then uh, lastly, we have Integral. Uh, there's a plugin for Phoenix that connects to Integral. Integral is a secure central data repository and can be used to achieve 21 CFR Part 11 compliance. So all of these different modules have a common uh, user interface, so you can easily move uh, through different study types or use it in different departments in your organization. So next uh, comes the question, why? Why is Sertara wants to host Phoenix? Well, the rationale for this um, is as follows. Uh, Phoenix, as it's designed and developed today, is designed as a desktop analysis software platform. Uh, it was originally released in 2009, and the kind of the typical compute environment is that the analyst uh, is running Phoenix directly on his or her laptop. However, uh, over time, you know, Sertara, we interact with our customers all the time and we listen to them and, and you know, find out how they use Phoenix. Uh, they've long asked for server-based deployments of Phoenix. Uh, an example of this is the Phoenix desktop application installed on a server, a multi-user server, where the end users might access the server through, say, a Citrix client. Um, and uh, we found that there are some challenges with many users accessing that same server with respect to resources such as RAM, temporary storage space, uh, and so on. And so I wanted to point out that Sertara IT has the technical and domain experience to host Phoenix, and that has the following advantages. One is optimization of the Phoenix application performance for end users. So uh, if you perceive that the performance is slow, uh, hosted Phoenix is designed to overcome that and make it a much more uh, performant application. Uh, another advantage is scalability with respect to the number of users and processor cores. So you can scale up to any number of users uh, and uh, as many processor cores are needed depending on the intensity of the computations you're doing with Phoenix. Um, another advantage of this is that Sertara provides validation of the software environment as a service. So what that means is we run the validation suite for you. Uh, if you do get hosted Phoenix, uh, the moment you first log in, it's already been validated by us and you have the validation report ready to look at right on your, your instance. Um, and then also the fact that we're hosting uh, uh, Phoenix means that we manage the change control. Uh, change control with respect to Amazon Web Services, which is the environment that we host Phoenix in, as well as any Phoenix version upgrades. So, uh, so when a new version of Phoenix comes out, uh, for example, 8.4 just came out last week, uh, we will roll out the new version to your Phoenix hosted instance so you don't have to manage the, con the change control within your organization. And it also provides flexibility. Uh, so uh, end users can access Phoenix ho hosted on any uh, machine where you can install the Amazon Workspace client. Uh, and that includes PCs, Macs, and even Linux. Okay. Another um, aspect of the hosted Phoenix is the job management system. This has actually um, been around for a while, but um, what the job management system does is it allows for remote processing. So, why, uh, so what is remote processing? You can take an individual workflow object, such as an NCA with a large data set or a large NLME model, and send it off to a remote server for processing. Uh, you can also do remote processing of entire workflows. So essentially, anything that you click in your Phoenix object browser, you can send off to, for remote processing. And why is this important? Well, it's important because sometimes workflows or large NLME models, such as a bootstrapping run, they may take a long time to run. You know, maybe it takes five, 10, 15 minutes or even longer. And so what you can do is you can send off that long, something that you expect to take a long time to run to the remote server 
And then in the meantime, you can do other work in Phoenix while the remote job is processing. And then whatever it comes up in the queue is finished, you can just bring the results right back into your Phoenix project. So you don't have to have interruptions in your work, looking at a blue donut, go get coffee while something's running. You know, those days are over with. Uh, uh, the remote pro job processing takes care of that for you. Uh, and I do want to point out that Sertara IT has the technical understanding to configure and optimize the JMS. Um, a brief look at some performance metrics. So what we did is we took a set of automated tests to generate performance metrics. The automated test means it's a standard set of data sets, a standard set of workflows, uh, and then run, run them through to produce outputs, and then just uh, record the runtime. So kind of the typical laptop installation, uh, the, um, the wind on LIN uh, automated tests took about five minutes to run. The NLME uh, tests took about 50 minutes to run. Uh, in kind of one of the pain point customer environments, such as a Citrix server, it takes almost double the amount of time to run. Uh, but in uh, Phoenix hosted in AWS, the performance is comparable or even superior to uh, the performance in the laptop installation. Okay. Okay. So uh, I did want to briefly talk about uh, Integral as well. So um, the val I have some slides about the validation suite that I'll share. I don't want to dive too deeply into those because we do the validation for you. Uh, but I do want to point out that if you do want to run the validation suite on your own, uh, it does come prepackaged with Phoenix Hosted, so you can run it uh, if you want. Okay. All right. So my next topic uh, to talk about is what is Integral. So Integral is a central data repository. Um, and you can use it to easily bring together um, uh, files and outputs from a variety of different applications. So they include Phoenix uh, or even third-party uh, applications such as SAS files, RS files, and other data sets from multiple and disparate uh, storage places. Uh, Certera Integral allows users to connect, capture, visualize and analyze data anytime and anywhere while ensuring compliance guidelines are met. So it's both accessible and it's compliant and it stores both your data set and your analysis. So what are some of the uh, key differentiators? Uh, so with respect to compliance, uh, Integral ensures 21 CFR Part 11 compliance criteria for regulatory submissions. Um, it is a secure and third-party verified pre-validated, cloud-based, software as a service, also known as SaaS, hosted technology. It provides version control, traceability, and auditability of data and analysis. Another thing that Integral provides is operational efficiencies. So there's one data and model repository that provides data integrity and an improved workflow. Uh, Integral is accessible through the Phoenix platform, and it's designed to be application agnostic, meaning that it can uh, get uh, data or analysis from other third-party applications via the client application, the integral client. Uh, integral enables quick search and visualization of data, and it adheres to and transforms CDISC data standards into searchable content. Um, it allows sharing and reporting of internal data with CROs and partners as well. And it comes with an implementation guidance, which is included to maximize efficiencies and best practices. And getting to learn uh, Integral, there is a series of tutorials up at our training website, uh, Sertara University, and we do provide full support for usage of Phoenix as well as Integral. Okay. So what is an example of a, of a workflow? So I'm actually going to show this during my demo, but I want to show conceptually a flow diagram of kind of a, a generic workflow. So this big cloud icon, this is Phoenix hosted in AWS. Um, if you have it along with Integral, uh, Sertara hosts Integral in a Amazon uh, Workspaces private cloud, uh, and Phoenix can interface with Integral. So data is in Integral, the analysts can pull the data into Phoenix, run an analysis, and then save it back to Integral. And then if the analysis is repeated at a later date, uh, the, um, there's version control. So it will increment up by one version the next time you save it back uh, with an audit trail entry saying who did the save, uh, at what date, and for what reason. Okay. So on the right side of my diagram, uh, there's the, um, 
it, it's kind of what, uh, what what you see at the customer site. So if you get Phoenix hosted, this is how you would use it. Uh, so as I mentioned previously, uh, you can work with Phoenix uh, and interact with Integral. There's also a web browser. Uh, so uh, Chrome, Firefox, and Edge are all supported as browsers. And that's primarily for visualization as well as system administration. So an administrator of the integral system, you know, there's different levels of access. There's administrator, fully licensed user, uh, and like a read-only QA reviewer um, type of roles uh, that control the level of access uh, the user has to see and interact with different studies that are stored in integral. And then there's also the integral client application, which is this uh, four circle inter interconnected uh, little icon here. And that is uh, used to, if you have your data science environment, maybe you're using some third party softwares, uh, maybe it's non-mem or SAS, R, Monolix, what have you. Uh, and then you can use the client app to uh, uh, store and retrieve outputs from that data science environment. In addition to uh, the access at the, at the customer, um, there's also the concept of a partner license. So if your organization outsources some of your analysis to say a CRO, as an example, uh, you can buy a partner license for Integral that allows that third party vendor to interact with Integral in the same way you would through Phoenix, uh, through a web browser, or through the client application. But the key difference is the partner has a very limited access to Integral. They can only see the studies that have been assigned to them, and they cannot see other studies that were generated uh, on-prem or, or from other third-party vendors. Uh, so it is designed to be an entirely collaborative environment with a good uh, access control uh, for who should be accessing what, as well as having auditability and traceability of all the work that is done in this collaborative environment. Okay, um, another feature to Integral, so when users interface, it doesn't matter how, through Phoenix, the web browser, or the client app, uh, there is an Okta login. Okay, um, so Integral is a cloud-based application hosted by Sertara in AWS. Uh, it has a Okta login, a system for all users via uh, any of the methods I described. Um, it does support, we, we do have support for single sign-on. And we can uh, work with you to configure Integral uh, to uh, communicate between our Okta, which is what Integral uses, and then your on-prem uh, single sign-on uh, uh, federation, which could be Okta, Azure AD, or Ping. Uh, and then what the user sees when they log in is this login screen. Uh, the username is typically the email address of the person who's accessing the system, and then their own password. So by default, you just specify your own password. However, uh, we can configure Integral to support single sign-on. Um, here are a couple of example screenshots of Integral. So this is uh, from the Integral web browser. And on the uh, left-hand side, there's a listing of the studies. So all of these solid blue folders are studies in Integral. And within them, each study has a structure. Uh, you get analysis, which is for projects, uh, data for the input data files and documents for any third-party uh, documents such as uh, PDFs or PowerPoints, protocol summary, what have you, anything that's related to the study. And then in this case, uh, this CSV file is selected in the left side and the main uh, contents in the viewing window just show the contents of that file. So this happens to be a PopPK input data set. Um, here is another example. Uh, same idea, it's in the integral browser. And in this case, the analyst has selected an R script that produces VPC plots. And so with that uh, item selected, uh, the main viewing window shows the contents of that R script. Um, this is a snapshot of the security module. Uh, so there's a, a shield icon at the top of uh, integral, uh, and it shows different access groups, um, all access, all read, archivists, administrator, uh, et cetera. And then over on the right, it's a simple checklist. It's very easy to manage security. So uh, someone who's in the all read group will essentially have read access uh, at the root folder level, at the data level, and at the library level. Uh, and you can also look at individual members and see what access rights they have uh, to the system as well as studies within the system. Um, if, a, if a user has um, uh, brought data from Integral into Phoenix and then wants to save analysis back, 
uh, they are prompted with an electronic signature, uh, which uh, asks them to put in their username, which is their email address, their password, and a reason uh, for updating the system. So saving my uh, crossover study analysis, for example. Um, once it's saved, uh, if you look at uh, from the web browser, if you actually look at the contents of that study or that object, uh, you'll see a uh, revision number. It increments by one each time a save event occurs. Uh, and then uh, it shows the, uh, the author by email address as well as a date timestamp and the reason they provided uh, for updating the system. Okay. And so just to summarize, you know, there, we, we realize there are other data repositories and methods for, for doing this. Uh, they include things like SharePoint, uh, GitHub, as well as uh, Sertara's own PKS. Um, Sertara is actually, uh, 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 Integral is actually the next generation of PKS. You could think of it that way. So if any of you actually ever used PKS, it's the next generation of PKS. Uh, but Sertara solutions allow for 21 CFR Part 11 compliance, uh, as well as file versioning, uh, version control, uh, blinding and archiving, uh, creating save points and file linkings. So it's a much more comprehensive uh, solution than uh, some of the other offerings that you might uh, grow in-house or have used PKS in the past. Uh, and also Sertara Integral is designed to work with CDISC data sets, which allow data mining capabilities and, and meta-analysis. Uh, so these are just some examples. Uh, I'm going to send uh, these slides out. Uh, these will be available to you after the presentation so you can review all of these. And if you have any questions about them, we'll be happy to answer those. Okay, so to summarize, the key customer benefits to Integral is to make data-driven informed decisions increase PK and clinical operational efficiencies, uh, enable greater internal and third-party collaborations, um, ensure that data is reproducible, traceable, and secure, uh, removes a lot of the IT burden of managing uh, these data repositories and systems, and the insurance policy to successfully pass a US FDA data audit. Okay. So with that being said, I would like to go ahead and move on to the demo portion of my presentation. So I'm going to switch over to this is this is my integral. Uh, sorry, this is my uh, Amazon uh, Workspaces client app. And this little client app that uh, is the uh, red cube icon is um, can be installed on PC or Mac environments. And so now I have uh, logged into the uh, the hosted Phoenix environment. So on this environment, it's it's basically like a virtual desktop. Uh, there's one of these per user. So each user uh, that has a license for this uh, essentially gets their own working environment. It's just like a virtual desktop. Um, it does have the supported web browsers installed as well as Phoenix. Um, you can ask for some third-party installations if you want on there, such as R. And uh, so here I have Phoenix and I'm going to open Phoenix and then connect to the integral web browser so uh, that's a pack a package at the top actually i'm gonna i'm gonna go back one step here i'm gonna sh first show the validation so remember um, that sertara does do the validation for you so the first moment you log in it's already validated you have access to the validation reports um, and the validation report here uh, can be accessed directly from this validation menu it's in a pdf format and so we'll bring it up here. So it has a um, it has a title page with the Sertara logo on it, uh, talking about the the report. And then uh, it shows an execution summary, which shows the compute environment, all aspects of it, the hardware, the number of test cases that were run, uh, the overall runtime, uh, information about the environment, the name of the PCs, CPU count, uh, and so on. Uh, and then uh, there is a listing of the test execution, uh, which includes the installation qualification tests, the wind online specific tests, such as all of the computational uh, and data tools, um, the all of the modeling tools, whether they be compartmental modeling tools in this case, bioequivalence tools, deconvolution, uh, as well as, of course, uh, a battery of non-compartmental analysis tests uh, with different routes of administration, uh, whether or not partial AECs are, are included or not, 
uh, whether it's single dose or steady state, uh, different trapezoidal area methods, uh, and so on. Uh, rich sampling versus sparse sampling, uh, plasma versus urine data, uh, all of the uh, analysis tools um, you know, are, are, are provided uh, in these test cases in the validation report. And you can also, if you want to inspect uh, closer for an individual test case, you can see the reference file that was produced at Certara, the run file that was produced using that same workflow in the Phoenix hosted environment, and any differences. But essentially, if the, past, the test case passed, there, there is no difference between the reference and the run file no significant difference. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close that and return to uh, Phoenix. And now I want to uh, uh, do a analysis here. So I'm going to go ahead and log into the Integral browser. And I just want to show a few um, aspects of interfacing between Phoenix uh, hosted and Integral. So I'm going to use this as my uh, draw from the repository. So I'm connecting to an integral instance. Uh, I have one uh, uh, example here, which is a preclinical uh, PK uh, study. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up a Phoenix project. And I found the project, I'm using load save point uh, to load this project from integral. Okay, so it's loading into the project. I'll go ahead and minimize my browser for now. And I just want to briefly show uh, what the input data set looks like. So it's in this uh, samples file here. And the sample file is a spreadsheet uh, that includes uh, information. It's a two period crossover study. So um, um, there's a listing of the study name, subject IDs, the matrix, which happens to be plasma in this case, the period, which is one or two, uh, the day, uh, the treatment description. So there's two different uh, treatments. There's a pairwise comparison of the uh, compound of interest and the compound plus an antibiotic. Uh, the treatment route, which is uh, extravascular. Uh, the planned time, actual time, concentrations, and then some other demographic data uh, in the file. And this is uh, essentially in this project, it's run through a typical um, uh, crossover study workflow. So maybe the analyst made some exploratory plots. Uh, this is a side by side comparison of the two treatments and all of the subjects that got them, uh, their blood concentrations versus time on a linear scale. And then, of course, there's a non compartmental analysis that is run. Uh, the date, it's all set up and run, and the PK parameters have all been computed uh, by the NCA uh, analysis tool. And then the analyst went further and went on to create a summary table uh, by treatment. Uh, listing the subjects um, and key PK parameters. Uh, there's a lot of nice formatting options in the table objects, such as superscripts and subscripts, uh, and also precision. Uh, so the time-dependent parameters might be formatted to two decimal places. The PK, uh, other PK parameters might be formatted to, say, three significant uh, figures, uh, depending on the, the parameter, uh, with some summary statistics below each column uh, to further um, describe the, the results. And then maybe the analyst made a box plot comparing Cmaxes between the two the two treatments. Okay, so that's an example. I've pulled this from Integral, and I want to show how to interface this workflow with the job management system that I mentioned previously. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this entire workflow out of date. I can do that using a simple step. I'll go to this data link, which is kind of the input for all of the observations into the workflow. Uh, and so I'm going to just unmap one of the variables here, uh, everything downstream turned red, and then remap the study column. And then I'm going to execute the data link object. And now let's say that um, I think this workflow is going to take 10 minutes to run, and I don't want to just sit and wait for it to complete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this remote execute option here. So I'm going to click remote execute and then press submit. It's going to give me a status, and I'm waiting for a prompt that tells me that it was submitted successfully, uh, and it was. Uh, and if I go to the window menu and select View Jobs, I can see that my workflow has been submitted to the queue. And let's say I want to do a little bit of further work. Uh, so uh, maybe I forgot to make a log plot of the uh, individual subject data. So I'm going to proceed as an analyst and do my thing. 
Uh, I'm going to put this in the, uh, the workflow, um, create my plot. And so maybe I want to group uh, subjects uh, and then I'll have use the actual time, raw concentration, and then uh, compare the treatment side by side by mapping treatment description as a lattice column. Uh, remember to plot, do a semi-log plot uh, and then execute. Uh, maybe on the layout, I want to fit image to screen so I can visualize it better. And then I will just call this uh, log conk plot all subjects by treatment. And maybe I want to further make a uh, concentration time uh, table. So uh, if I want to make a table, um, I will put this in the main workflow. And then maybe I want to list all of the subjects. Um, and then I want to list the concentrations. And then maybe I've got the uh, treatment description as a, uh, as a row stratification and maybe the nominal times as a column stratification. Uh, and then I can make uh, this concentration table. So I'm continuing my work uh, in Phoenix. Maybe I want a page break, so I'll re-execute locally. Okay, and I'll call this a um, raw conch table all subjects, something like that. Okay, and then I'll come back to uh, Phoenix and look at my job viewer. And I see, hey, the results are in the queue, so that's great. I can just go ahead and merge them back into my project. And I'll select merge, and I do want to save changes to the project, so I'll say yes to that. And so now while I was making my additional uh, uh, figures, uh, I was able to run the workflow remotely, saving time and being able to just continue my work uninterrupted in, in Phoenix. So I'll go ahead and let this merge back. It's bringing it back into the project. And the queue has cleared out. And my analysis is now all up to date with my additional work. And now I want to save it back to Integral. So I'm going to select Integral and then Save. If I choose Save As, it creates a new um, revision at revision one, but in this case, I'm clicking Save, so I'm saving over previous work. And I'll click Next and then Finish. I'll give a reason. Um, I'll call it uh, Rerun Workflow and Add TFLs. Okay, and I'll click Next. And it's prompting me for the electronic signature, which I will go ahead and provide. And sign in. Okay, so now it's saving it back to integral. Okay, and done. And now I can switch over to the web browser. Let's say I want to check my work. So now I'm in a web browser. This one happens to be Chrome. Uh, I'm connecting to the integral instance. Uh, I happen to have single sign-on, so I just passed through. I didn't have to give a password. Uh, and I will check the study that I looked at, uh, which was uh, this one here. And it's under analysis, NCA web. And I can look at the properties. I can see that uh, it was just run today with a date timestamp. Uh, here, there's a history uh, that I had gone ahead and added it. So it's got my name, first name, last name, email, uh, and the reason that I just provided there. And it's also possible to generate a full audit report if necessary, including file differences between the versions, which is very powerful. If you want to see if someone's QCing this and they want to see what changed from one revision to the next uh, beyond the audit reason, uh, you can generate the full audit report uh, and see it in a PDF format, which is uh, this one here. Okay. All right. And so uh, all of the um, the history of what happened with this um, is 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 shown here in the audit report. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close the audit report. Um, I've got one other example to show you briefly, and so I'm going to look for another study. Uh, I'm going to go back to the integral browser from Phoenix, so I'm gonna close this project. 
And then in my integral browser, um, you know, it's also possible to get this with NLME. So I'll show you a brief uh, NLME example. Is my browser already open? Okay, my browser is already open, so I'm going to search for a different study, uh, which is uh, here. So maybe I have a pop PK example, and so I'll load the save point. And yeah, this this is just a small uh, demo example. I don't want it's not particularly busy or populated. Um, but I've got this um, population covariate model uh, with all of the results that you would expect from a population analysis. Uh, so things like the uh, 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 pop dependent variable, like the predicted versus observed, uh, the um, goodness of fit. Um, uh, so you can look at the residuals if you want to, the QQ plots, uh, everything that you would expect uh, from a population PK analysis, eta histograms, uh, the final parameters in the thetas, uh, and then I had run this in the FOCE ELS mode, okay? But let's say that I want to rerun this analysis, um, and it might take a little bit of time. So I'm just going to make it out of date by unmapping the uh, patient ID and then remapping it. I'm going to set, um, I'm actually going to copy this model and paste it back into the workflow. So one thing that happens often in uh, population PK analysis is trying different models and tweaking the models and going through different stages of population analysis. And let's say I don't wanna lock up my whole Phoenix waiting for this to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this off to the uh, remote server. Okay. I'll wait for it to say that it was successfully submitted, and it was. And now I'm going to, um, rerun this model in a different run mode, just as a, a very simple example. So I'm going to run it in the QRPEM mode instead of the FOCE ELS mode, right? So I'll just go to my run options, uh, select the QRPEM as my run mode, and I'm just gonna run this locally here because I kind of want to be right on the spot to see what those results are, okay? So this one's gonna run locally, um, but the nice part of this is you can set, set up as many uh, jobs as you want uh, in, the, uh, in the job queue. So it's a very powerful feature. So this one's actually running locally. And then if I want to uh, look at the job management system, I can go to vent window, view jobs. Uh, this one's processing remotely. The other one's processing locally. Okay, and this is using the uh, multiprocessor interface. Okay, it says it's in progress. This one's completed. I'll click OK to that. Close the NLME job status and have a look at my uh, results. So I've got my uh, my thetas here. And then if I want to go back to the job queue, I can view jobs. And it says results in queue. So I'll select action and then merge. Select merge and say yes to save the changes. And this will bring, uh, bring those modeling results back into my Phoenix project. Okay, so this is my first run. And then I've got my second model. Okay, so so those are a couple um, of different examples of working in the Phoenix hosted environment uh, with Integral. My next step would be to save back to Integral uh, if if I wanted to, if I was worried about compliance. If I'm not, I could just save it locally, like any other project. Uh, there is some native storage space in Phoenix hosted. You get 100 gigabytes of local storage, uh, so it's designed to be just like a virtual desktop for you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and return to the slides and then just talk about our two main product offerings. So uh, there's, there's two options here if you decide uh, to, to look at Phoenix Hosted. The first is Phoenix Hosted. Um, that's essentially the vir virtual desktop with Phoenix, the job management system, and the validation service provided by Sertara. However, there is no integral component in this offering. So it would be up to you to, to uh, do any steps to um, you know, QC the data and, uh, uh, or if you're doing non-compliant work. Uh, Phoenix Hosted Compliant 
uh, is also has Phoenix hosted in the Amazon workspaces with data stored in the compliant integral cloud. Uh, and that comes with one win non lin license, one integral admin, one integral fully licensed user, the Amazon Workspaces client, and of course, uh, in, in both of the offerings, the AWS environments are managed, maintained, and validated by Certara. So with that, that, that concludes my planned presentation. So I would like to open up for the uh, question and answer session. So Sebastian? Thank you, Chris, for the, for the presentation, super insightful. Um, again, please feel free to submit your uh, questions to Chris. Um, we will address them. And there are already a few questions that came through. Um, and the first question to you, Chris, is how often is Phoenix updated? Great question. Yeah, yeah, good, good question. So we release um, a new Phoenix version approximately once per year. Uh, and we just last week released Phoenix version 8.4. So that's the latest version. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're on an approximately one year cadence with that. All right, great, thanks. And related to that, will I be notified when Phoenix is updated in a Phoenix hosted environment? Yes, yes, you will be notified. Uh, we, when we update it, we give you uh, one month of notice uh, when I, Phoenix or Integral um, are updated. Uh, and so that way, you, you know, it won't just happen on its own. You'll have some sort of notice um, that, that, that it's coming up. All right, great, thanks. Um, the next question is, can I get Phoenix hosted with or without Integral? Yeah, yeah, so that, that alludes to what I'm showing on this slide. So uh, you can get just the Phoenix hosted if you wanna just have the analysis platform with the performance and all of the hosting services maintained by Certara. Uh, and then if you choose to get it with Integral, then you'll have the compliant version of Phoenix hosted. All right, perfect. And we have one more question that came through. Um, does Certara offer a free trial for Phoenix hosted? Yeah, yeah. So you can do um, you can do an evaluation. Uh, typically, those run for two weeks. Uh, and to set up a Phoenix hosted evaluation, you can just contact your your account manager at Certara, and they will help you get that evaluation all set up, uh, get the environment created for you, so you can do a full evaluation. You 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 can log into the system and use it as if it were in production, even though it's an evaluation, and decide if it's um, of benefit to you and if you want to move forward forward with it. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Chris. Um, it seems that we don't have any more questions from the audience. And um, if that's the case, I think we can wrap it up for today. Um, again, as I said before, we will send you the recording of the webinar uh, in the next few days. Feel free to rewatch it. Feel free to share it internally. And, um, and of course, feel free to reach out to us if you have more questions. And with that, again, Chris, thank you very much for that great presentation. And um, thank you to the audience for the engaging um, event we had here. With that, have a good day and take care. Thank you. Thanks, Sebastian. Thanks, everyone. Bye.